Hi everyone, my name is Taylor Kane, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my experiences as a patient advocate and taking you through my advocacy journey. So I'm going to be in this live chat session, so if you have any questions for me at all or any questions about advocacy during this my little presentation, uh, please just send them in the chat message and I will do my best to answer them. All right, so starting at the beginning of my advocacy journey. So when I was three years old in 2001, my dad was diagnosed with a rare genetic disease called adrenoleukodystrophy. Very long name, I know, but it's known as ALD for short. So ALD is a rare brain disease. Uh, there's no treatment or cure. So as a three-year-old, I watched over the next two years as my dad slowly began to lose the ability to walk, talk, swallow, and basically understand what was going on around him. Um, it was really hard, especially at that young age. You know, I was confused. I didn't necessarily know what was going on. Um, and I just didn't really understand what was happening to my dad. My dad passed away uh, when I was five years old, when I was in kindergarten. Um, at the time of his diagnosis, I also found out that I was a carrier of the disease. Um, since it's a genetic disease, you know, it is inherited family to family. Uh, so my dad passed the disease down to me. Um, and so I am a carrier. Um, I will not get the full blown disease like my dad had, but I do have a very high possibility of getting symptoms when I'm older, um, such as walking difficulties. And um, there's kind of a laundry list of symptoms that I can possibly develop. I also have a 50% chance of passing the disease down to any kids I have in the future. Uh, so that's definitely something that I'm gonna have to pay attention to, uh, especially when I get older and if I wanna start a family. Um, I've known that I was a carrier for as long as I can remember, and I'm so glad about that because, you know, it's made it a lot easier for me to adjust to it and to be able to prepare for the future and, you know, understand the precautions that I may want to take when I'm older. So after my dad passed away, I definitely experienced feelings of loneliness, feelings of isolation. I just generally felt different than the kids around me. Um, you know, I didn't know any other kids who didn't have two parents. Um, I didn't want anyone to know that my dad had passed away. I didn't want anyone to know about this weird family disease that that I had. Um, I just didn't want anything that would make me, you know, stand out from the crowd. Um, so it was hard because I didn't really have anyone to talk to. Uh, you know, I could talk to my mom about it sometimes, but, you know, it just... I definitely held it all inside for a very long time. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of kids do. I mean, you don't want, you don't want something that's going to make you different in a bad way. Um, but I think it's so important to remember that even though you may look around you say in your classroom or among your friends and think that everyone has some perfect life, it's important to remember that, you know, everyone is going through something. Everyone has struggled at some point. Everyone faces some kind of adversity and that we all have something that makes us feel different. So a few years passed by before I kind of opened up and entered into the so-called advocacy world. Um, I was having a really hard time coping with the loss of my dad. Um, I really missed him. I, I wanted to do something good in his memory. Um, I wanted to help other families with ALD. Uh, so I decided that I wanted to get more involved um, in my family's nonprofit. So before my dad passed away, him and my mom started a nonprofit organization called Run for ALD um, to raise money and awareness for the disease. Um, and I, you know, always attended these events, but I was never directly involved. Uh, but when I was in fourth grade, I decided that I wanted some of my, to see if some of my friends wanted to come. Um, and so at this point, it was definitely known that, you know, I didn't have a dad, um, but no one really exactly knew the story or exactly knew what had happened to him. Um, so I decided that, you know, it was time to talk about it. So I went to my principal in my elementary school and I asked him if I could go, um, and, you know, tell the students about our upcoming event. Um, and super nice of him. He took me around to all the fourth grade classes and I went in and I talked about my dad and I told his story. I told our family story. I talked about ALD, tried my best to explain it. Um, even though that was definitely hard for a nine-year-old trying to understand, you know, the magnanimity of this rare disease. 
Um, but you know, I didn't really, I didn't have any special skills. I didn't go in and act like I was a doctor. I just kind of went in and said what happened and, you know, asked for their support. Um, and to my surprise, a lot of people from my class did end up coming to the run. They had their parents donate. Some of my teachers even came. It was just, it blew me away. Um, you know, just to see the support that that I had in my community and that I was able to get just from telling my story and something that I'd wanted to hide for so long. That was really my first journey into being an advocate, my first experience as an advocate. Um, you know, at the time, I didn't think, oh, I'm doing advocacy. I had no idea what advocacy was. I had no idea, you know, that there was this thing so much bigger than myself. Um, advocacy for for an issue that's important to you and community advocacy and, you know, advocacy and, and medical care, rare diseases, chronic conditions, etc. You know, I was just a young kid just doing what I thought was right and doing something to honor my dad. Um, you know, as I got older, I started, you know, being more willing to share my story. Um, the next year, I actually wrote an article um, basically just a few page long story about ALD and what my dad had went through, similar to what I talked about in the classrooms. Um, and I had my fifth grade teacher help me edit it. And I actually sent it to a little, uh, I sent it to a local magazine, uh, with my mom's help, of course, because I was only 10 years old at the time. Um, and I wasn't necessarily expecting to hear anything back, but, uh, the, the editor of the magazine wrote back that she wanted to publish my, my article in the upcoming edition of the magazine. And they also wanted to, you know, promote this upcoming year's run for ALD, which was just another amazing experience. Like I felt so lucky that my story was getting noticed and that people were able to learn more about my dad. Um, it was just incredible. Um. So as I continued, you know, to tell my story, I did so with the purpose of raising awareness of ALD and raising money for research. Um, but as I got older, I started, you know, to dive into other aspects of advocacy, such as legislative advocacy. So the important thing to remember about advocacy is that your advocacy journey is always changing. You know, you might do one thing one day and completely something different the next. Um, or you might really be focused on one particular subject or topic within advocacy one year. And then, you know, as you get older, you may want to focus a little bit more on something else. Um, or, you know, you may be developing more special skills. You may get more experience and that might take you down a different path. Um, so when I was in high school, uh, a newborn screening test was developed for ALD. So basically, um, every newborn, um, well, it depends on where you live. Um, newborn screening is different in every state in the United States and also in every country in the world. Um, you know, some countries screen for more diseases than others. Some states screen for more diseases than others. But when I was in high school, a newborn screening test was developed for ALD. So with newborn screening, um, they take a prick of blood from a baby's heel and they'll test it for different genetic um, and rare diseases. So a test was developed for ALD and, you know, it just clicked perfectly in my mind. Like I want my home state of New Jersey in the United States uh, to screen newborns for ALD. Um, this is so incredibly important, especially for ALD, because since there is no treatment or cure, uh, the only real option at the moment is to get a bone marrow transplant, uh, which has to be done before symptoms develop, um, you know, for it to work to its best ability. Um, but unfortunately, with rare diseases, that can be incredibly difficult because, you know, a lot of rare disease patients face a long diagnostic odyssey, uh, takes them a very long time to get a diagnosis, and they usually don't know before symptoms develop. Um, unless there is some sort of technology like newborn screening or some sort of other genetic testing where they can find out before they get the symptoms. Um, so for this, I, I turned again to writing. Um, I wrote a letter to... Um, my state senator and sent it to him and, you know, basically told him about my story, told him that a newborn screening test was developed for ALD um, and asking him if he could introduce a bill um, to add ALD to the New Jersey newborn screening panel. I think at the time, New Jersey was already screening for 50 something diseases. Um, so, you know, I really thought that ALD should definitely be added on there, given the importance of finding out early. And I really expressed that through the through the letter for sure. Um, I definitely wasn't necessarily expecting to hear back. You know, I didn't know much about the legislative process, but a few months later, I did receive a letter back from my state senator, and he said that he was going to co-sponsor and introduce a bill um, to test newborns for ALD. 
So that took me to the state house, the state capitol. I testified in support of the bill. Basically, you know, just a similar kind of, of advocacy step. I went in there and I told my story. I talked about my family. I talked about my dad. I also talked about another boy that I knew at the time who lived in the area. Um, he had ALD and um, he was very sick. And I explained that, you know, if New Jersey had newborn screening for ALD, his life could have been saved. Um, so I talked about all those things. Um, the bill was unanimously passed and it was signed into law in 2013. So this was an incredible experience. And I was really able to see that my words and telling my story could have a tangible impact, even on something as big as, you know, laws and legislation. Uh, so legislative advocacy is another branch of advocacy that may be of interest to you to get into. Um, I think it sounds a lot more, you know, intimidating uh, than it actually may be. But in my case, it was pretty much as simple as writing a letter and then telling my story. So definitely something that that everybody could do just for one example. Um, so as I as I continue to get older, my advocacy definitely began to shift um, a little bit more. So I started learning more about other rare diseases. Um, I started becoming more interested in what my carrier status meant for me. Um, you know, growing up, I didn't pay that much attention to it, but in high school, I started, you know, wanting to understand it better and maybe even meet some other young carriers. Uh, so I turned to Facebook. Uh, this was the time that social media was also getting really big, especially in the healthcare community. Uh, so I created a private closed Facebook group for young ALT carriers when I was 16, and I still run that today. Um, so this was amazing, you know, being able to turn to social media for advocacy because it helped me connect with so many other young adult advocates, which is something that I find so valuable. I mean, growing up, I, I, as I said, I felt different and, you know, being involved in advocacy and in community service work definitely helped, but it took a while for me to actually meet someone who I felt, you know, understood. Um, social media really helped with this. Um, I've, you know, to this day met so many incredible young advocates that I call many of my close friends. Um, I was also able to get involved in some more organizations uh, such as Global Genes or Eurordis. Um, and just, you know, through making these connections and building my network, I learned that there was many other diseases uh, that had carriers like myself. Um, they're known as X-linked diseases. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail now, but uh, females with X-linked diseases or carriers like myself do face a lot of um, particular issues such as little information about their symptoms and difficulty with reproductive decisions. Um, and so I decided in 2017, uh, my first year of college, to create a nonprofit organization called Remember the Girls, uh, which is the first and only organization in the world that is dedicated to female carriers with X-linked diseases. Uh, so that's still something that I work on today. I definitely partner with a lot of other organizations. Um, and, you know, I'm able to just continue to grow my advocacy work so much so much more than I expected. I, I never could have known that day back in fourth grade that that my advocacy journey would become what it is today. And I'm so, so grateful. Um, so I think two incredibly important things to remember are one, that you are not alone on this journey. There are so many ways to connect with other young people, connect with people in your community, get involved, be an advocate. And that advocacy is about finding what you want to change and taking action to change it. Always remember that, um, you know, you have the issue and then you have the action. The action is the advocacy. Um, I think a great place to start. And as you can see from my experience is writing about your story um, or, you know, writing about your experience. Um, you know, it's a great way to just get your voice out there uh, to have, you know, more awareness about a specific health concern um, and just a way to really dive into advocacy. Um, you know, also if you're particularly young, you could have, you know, some older adults in your life, your parents, your teachers help you edit it. Um, I know that I can is definitely willing to publish uh, young people's stories and articles because they really want the medical community to understand the experience of kids and teenagers. Um, and so at the end of the day, do not think that you were too young to be an advocate. Advocacy has no age. I started advocating when I was in elementary school. You know, you're never too young to start. 
Um, we need all types of people with all types of ages, with all types of backgrounds involved in advocacy. And I definitely encourage you to do so. Um, if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Um, I'm also going to be including my contact information if you ever wanna get in touch with me on social media or on email. Um, I love helping other young people just cause you know, I'm 22 now, so not too far off of the, of the teen and age group. And you know, I had grown up doing advocacy and have learned a lot of my experience. So I'm always willing to help and, and to share. Thanks, I hope you guys enjoyed the conference.